Welcome back, everybody. Today we are smoking the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust 80th anniversary for Famous Smokes 80th anniversary. Uh, we're talking about all kinds of weird stuff again. We are talking Always. about bug out bags for the pending zombie apocalypse. <laughs> we're talking about the death of snow days. And I'm opening up a small brick and mortar business in a pandemic. All that and more. This is Cedar Culture. Kick back and relax, it's time to shoot the shit Hanging out with the broskies, Gary and Eric Let the ash go long and the convo stay pure That's Cedar Culture That's Cedar Culture That's Cedar Culture Let's bundle these leaves and burn them and suck on them do I look weird wearing all this stuff? I feel weird, but like... <laughs> I want you to have a pile of... <laughs> Fuck, Eric, you're steering us into the mountain! That's me. I'm steering but... us into the, forever into the mountain. So what Gary's talking about is uh, my head get up, because we have a new audio set up. It's, so it's awesome. I think our audio is going to be a lot better um, as I learn how to use this stuff. So I'm going to be playing with this most of the episode. That's fine. Um, yeah, learning how to use it. But um, I think our audio is going to be way better. Either that or we're not going to have audio on this episode <laughs> because it's the first time I'm using it. So Well, that's cool. Well, we did one episode with, with no video. So imagine episode 12 could be no audio. No audio. <laughs> where we're just figuring Acting out. Like, it all we look, out. We look like 1930. Like we can, like the Charlie Chaplin videos where they would like do something and they cut to a black screen and have the words. I was, was going to call it a talkie, but it's not a talkie because they, they didn't talk. So, but what did they call them? A silent film? I don't know. I don't know. But um, to episode right. 12, 12 um, a dozen, dozen uh, Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust, yep. not a bank. This is not the first stick from them that we've had, but this is the 80th anniversary that, or the, that they did for the 80th anniversary for Famous Smoke yep. last year. Um, and then they re-ran it this year because it was such a hit. How excited are you right now? Like I said, I, I woke up this morning and was very excited for a few reasons. Um, I, I got a text late, late or early in the morning, rather, 4.45, saying that I did not have to report to work, that I could have a virtual work day due to the snow. Um, but I was nice. even more excited knowing that I was coming here to smoke this because uh, I've heard a lot of good things, and we, we love Sokka, and we love what, what he's doing, so I'm excited for this. So we do, but I also feel like for you, you know, you're really committed to... Like, like you've kind of stated recently that, that this is your brand that you're all in on right now. Right? Yeah. And so um, I read that when this came out, Steve Saka himself, he called this stick classic Saka. Um, so they say, like, never meet your idols, right? Ooh, yeah. And so what if, what if like, you're, you've been declaring yourself a big Saka fan, and if you have the stick that he himself has dubbed the Saka, classic, classic Saka, Saka, and if you don't like it, then what do you do? Do you change your stance? No, nah, then I say these are the lines I like from Saka, <laughs> Saka and, and this, but I'm, I'm hoping I like, that's I like the, the non-Saka Sakas. Right, the I like the non-classic The ones that he Sakas. doesn't like as much right. I like. But, um, you know, we've talked about him before. We later there. Sure. I always forget it's to bring cold. my gear. It's cold. I hope it, it, it lights, lights for us. I did fill it. We're going to have to pause 30 seconds in to the other three minutes in. Um, we like Sokka. You know, I think we've talked about him before. Sokka uh, was the, the master blender for, for um, Drew Estate. Uh, and then kind of went off on his own when they went in a certain direction. But um, just the presentation of the stick is beautiful. It's got this gold foil footband that says 80th anniversary. Um, and it's got the famous uh, smoke shop embossed on there. But man, it looks like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's golden ticket. I mean, it's shiny, it's, it's golden, it's, it's classic. And then you got that beautiful like teal blue or whatever blue it is, I'm colorblind, and gold uh, DTT logo. Just green. A, just a pretty, is it green? Yeah, I think the kids call it green. Hey, like I said, <laughs> colorblind, buddy. Let's, let's mock. No, dude, but that was let's awesome. Let's mock my disability on, that was, on film. <laughs> that was awesome just hearing you describe that because I can hear that like, you're really excited for this cigar. I am excited. I know, I'm happy. But I don't want to be overly excited where it's not, you know. The, the other cool thing about a stick like this, even though they did re release it, it, um, you know, it's a limited run. The original run was uh, 250 boxes of 10, right? Mm -hmm. And the re-release was 500 boxes of 10. So it's still not, it's not going to be the stick that you're going to go in and find a box of somewhere. You know, right. like the shops have them and they're gone. We got, We're lucky we enough got 10 to, of them. I think I was going to say we have five or you have six and I have four. So yeah. Like, however it worked out. We got 10. We got 10, man. We got, we got stock in this stick, buddy. We got stock in Saka. <laughs> 
Stock and Saka got some whiskey here, some bourbon. I got some of that Widow Jane maple bourbon. Sipped on that again, and some of the diet cream tea. And you're back with your diet cream. I'm, classic, I'm back right? with the diet cream. Um, my well, one of the guys I work with, my boss, invited me to do a bourbon exchange. Kind of one of those pyramid schemey. You know, you send one, and you can potentially get forty six cent to yeah, you. Yeah, I've got. How do they and work? And it's so out of character. What's the for math him to send on that? that? I, I, so he said, what happens is you kind of copy and paste the list. So let's well, just, say so, I did so it. So just so everybody kind of knows, it wouldn't know that here's this. So the the ask is, hey, you jump on this list. You're only going to have to send one bottle, and you're going to get up to forty billion bottles mailed to you. That's the premise. Potentially. Just so anybody That's the, premise. the premise. So so go ahead. So describe how does it actually how does that map so work? So from what it what it sounds like, you have to send to the person who you got the invite from. Okay. So let's say I did it with, with my buddy at work. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I'm going to, Eric's into bourbons. I'm going to do this with you. I would copy and paste the list of like so 15 these fuckers, people. So everybody that shares it, their, shit, their motivation is so that I send them a bottle. But kind then of? the only way I benefit is if I reshare it and go. So what people are doing is they're seeing the invite. The, like, so let's say you invited me. I see your invite. I, I go and buy you a bottle because I'm like into the idea. And then I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, crap. Now I have to solicit my friends on Facebook. Otherwise, I'm in the negative. Right. It's tough. Ugh, and, the, and, that's it's grimy. Only, and it's only like, it is. It's, it's grimy. And like I said, it's out of character for this guy I work with. But he was like, you know, I posted and I was going to delete it. He's like, but my good buddies were doing it. Um, I, I ended up not doing it. But my buddy said, hey, dude, I'm on like bottle two or three here. He's like, so I bought a, a $60 bottle. And he's like, I'm getting some stuff back now. I'm starting to see that return. So he's like, you know, he goes, yeah, it's definitely a pyramid thing, but it's it's working out. <laughs> it's definitely a pyramid thing, but it's working well, out. Hey, man, it's working it's out. Also working out for Bernie. Speaking of working Dude, out. Speaking of working out. And so I, I lit this up like right before you did. And like immediately you were talking about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And immediately I was like, oh, like, yeah, chocolate candy bar. Like that just tastes not super sweet, but it just like I got cocoa, I should say. Not, not really sweet, I got but I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to taint you. No, I got I like when you taint me. Um, <laughs> I got cocoa, too, but like 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 Hershey powder, like that dry, yeah, 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 un unsweetened mm -hmm. cocoa powder. So that's that's kind of what I was. But I also I get like pep, like I don't even call it the retrohale, like the finish pepper. Not a lot. Some slight pepper. Little, little zing of pepper, but Not man, the retrohale. I get like sweet leather, like like sweet really leather. good. I'm telling you, like, so I guess when I say I like Saka, and he's my brand, and you know some of the boutique -y stuff that I like, I like how the stick develops. I like that it kind of takes you. I, I use that word journey. I like that it takes you on you like a trip. I, I just like that. Um, there are some times where I just want to sit, like we were doing a couple weeks ago, or if we're by the pool and you don't want to have to think about. Concentrate on those flavor transitions. They they have sticks for that, but this is already I'm I'm enjoying it. It's got classic a lot of what I like. It's classic soccer. Tech guy, that rascal. Classic, He's a classic rascal. Um, So stats on the stick. It's a six by fifty two box press Toro Vitola. I would actually, and I'm not the expert by any means, but if you look from from the foot, I see a little bit more rounded. I would call it a soft box press. I don't see those hard lines, and even in the yeah. mouth, I don't get that. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. It's a box press, but yeah. it's got a classic feel to it. And I mean, it's, it's box smushed, slight, sl squished, it's box, box squished. squished. Yeah, I like it. You know, kids have the squishies, but soft. I mean, when yeah. you say soft, I mean it's if you go out uh, oh, yeah. width wise, it's well. You know, I didn't really feel it before we lit it, and I know the heat like will will open that up. So I wonder. That's true. Uh, I don't know um, how much of that. Just happened, but that is interesting. I don't want to squeeze it too much. A little squeeze, squeeze. That's so. I wonder I how, like, squeeze, how squeeze. does a company like, like, does Saka go to Famous, or does Famous go to Saka and say we want you to do this? I would guess Famous goes to Saka, because Famous also, for their 80th, they there was a couple other I have, lines. I, yeah. I wrote them down. Go ahead. Agonor Salif did an 80th anniversary stick. Romeo y Julieta did one. Yeah. Uh, Fernandez, AJ Fernandez. E.P. Carrillo and Arturo Fuente all did 80th anniversary sticks. That's, and I, that's I think it would be kind of cool to see how they all did it. Like, I thought that too. It would be even make a day of it and do them back to back. imagine? Except with the exception that we're a year behind. It's like from last year. So I was just thinking like, I like the allure kind of, kind of would wear off for me for that. That's true. 
But um, all right, so so I have I have a fact now. Uh oh. So, did you know? Get your notebooks, kids. Right, this will that, be on the test. Did you know that two, if two rats, if given eighteen months, those two rats would eventually multiply, um, in eighteen months to one million rats. So in eighteen months. In eighteen months, there's. So, so aren't they all inbred and like weird? <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, but I don't think anybody's. <laughs> ever looked at a rat and said like oh that's an inbred one that's not an inbred one that's West Virginia you're welcome rat. here you're not welcome here <laughs> no so, so two rats um, so so um, female rats have two uteri two uteruses mm. and so they can like be pregnant with two litters at the same time they've got like ten litter per litter and wow they're um, I, 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 I don't even know how the math works but they can actually copulate 500 times in six hours a female so <laughs> Um, if you're, if anybody ever asks, what do you want to be brought back as? See, but <laughs> it's so, a rat. So that's cool. But also, didn't you ever hear that old thing about the pig where they have like thirty-minute orgasms? No, you've never heard that little factoid. And I don't know if it's true. I never. And how, you never and asked. It, and <laughs> who's doing that research? Because who's dedicating their life. It's actually not that hard. Pig you orgasms. See, you just see if. if if the pig is actually curling its toes for like how long. <laughs> and like, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not horrible. So how long from the fact. start of Climax until it lights its cigarette up? But can you imagine like, yeah. So maybe that's where they get smoked pig because from the pig smoking their cigarettes after Probably co- coitus. No? All right. I tried. <laughs> Kids, I tried. We should have stopped that, that joke uh, a line earlier. Um, yeah. With so- the magic of editing. It's going to sound great. <laughs> My joke's going to sound amazing. I'm going to give you like Patrick Warburton's voice <laughs> doing some like family guy right, thing. There you go. Um, dude, all right. So, so this is a, a big day. So we, we had a, a couple of things we, we were going to talk about here. But, um, you know, one of the ones I, I had talked about really when we started this podcast, how I was leaving one company and looking for my next Correct. adventure. And so I was I a... Was, uh, chief operating officer at a, a small software company here in Philadelphia um, and I've decided to not go back to that world and actually go and open a, a hoagie franchise a primo hoagie franchise which I am super which excited is, for you I appreciate that and I'm super excited because so, I enjoy eating <laughs> you know it, what's what's funny is um, and when you came here you asked me you were like are, are you okay like something seemed a little off and I was just, I wanted to wait to talk about it how crazy this is and I don't know we can pontificate about it a little bit but but I'll talk about the good at first so so um, yeah I, I, I've started looking at small brick and mortar businesses and I uh, was actually looking at a, a franchise location um, and was going to buy it and ultimately decided it wasn't the right move for me. I'd rather open one closer to my house, a new store, start with yeah. a bunch of excitement. Um, so kind of made that decision and it was really interesting. You know, I, um, a friend had texted me about a week ago, um, the day after I made that decision to pivot from buying the to opening a new one. one yeah. yeah. And she said like, How, how's your day going? And I was like, oh, amazing. You know, I was like, I just had the courage to kind of shoot down something that seemed like a good thing, mm-hmm. but I thought wouldn't be good in the long term, and then had the courage to kind of commit to something that's going to be a lot more painful in the short term, but I think it's ultimately going to be better. And I don't know why I just phrased it that way. I guess pat myself on the back a little bit, but yeah. it was just really interesting, <clears throat> and then that's how I looked at it, and I've been super stoked all week, so excited, and I'm actually going to sign the contract tomorrow. I'm still excited, but, you know, I, somebody had reached out to me um, from the software world, you know, and they had heard I was like a free agent and we're reaching out to see what's going on. I actually just caught up with them today and we were on a Zoom so I could see his face and when I mentioned I was doing that, you should have seen like the almost like disgust or like disappointment in his face and and, and I'll tell you what, that stuck with me all day for some reason, you know, that idea and, and I know he's not the only one. I know people from that life, that world of mine will definitely look down on that in a way. So when you say you took it with you, like you're, are you feeling a little bit of that, 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 no, sourness? but but you know it just it, like you know sometimes the you piss in your cornflakes in the morning and you hold on to it and, I, and that's that's what I was carrying with me when you came I'm like why does somebody like that look and then and then go on to say like well how much money can you make doing that? I literally was with this person I said I don't even know that well um, it's just crazy that that's how a lot of people think and and that's, so I know I think that's one of the harder things for me doing this is knowing yeah. that there's the minority and they're not the people that are my friends but there's a small cohort of people that are almost like expecting or hoping failure. Um, which is motivating for sure, but it's also just sad. It is, and I, 
I went with the exact opposite, and I think it may be you know our friendship or just one hundred percent my good friends or with the fact the exact that opposite. I know your passion and your hard work. So when you say things like I'm going to take the harder road for the short term, I'm like, well, that's you talk about classic soccer. I think that's classic <laughs> art. You're a guy that's like I would rather eat shit for a little bit of time and learn, you know. Like I, I, yeah. I texted you the other day. And I'm day. just excited to do it. I think it's just going to be a good time slinging some hogs, man. But I texted you the other day. I was like, dude, you're making me like a, you're keeping me to a schedule. Like, you know, out, like when I leave the office, I'm like, all right, like <laughs> I'm trying to be a dad and just kind of low yeah. key, you know, doing my thing. And I'm like, dude, you keep me to kind of like a more regimented off time, if you want to say. <laughs> like, so it's a good thing. Right. Um, but no, I came at it the completely different angle. And I'm like, dude, good for you. Um, you, you're, I was like, you're going to be your own boss. Remember, like, I came up and I was like, dude, are you yeah, selling it? I mean, like, it's still a be... franchise, you know, so it's still, yeah, you still kind of, well, you, you, yeah, you can't sell spaghetti, but you like, you know. A master in a way, but it's it's still, and they, you know, they even say, like, the, the whole being your own boss thing isn't always it's, what it's cracked mm -hmm. up to be, right? Because the buck stops with you, all the stress goes to you. So the worst customer complaints ultimately stop to you. There's nobody else to refer them to, those kind of things. So, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of stress that comes with it, and and it's interesting because I, I just think some people consider it almost either taking an easy road hmm. or or taking a step back. But what people don't realize is that like obviously that's not what I where I want to stop. Most likely, maybe I will just open one. I'll make a decent living. I'll be happy with that. Who knows? Um, but the or it plan, could be the first key to something. The plan is is to, to to do it and move on, sort of build wealth through things that are maybe smaller but more enjoyable. Because who I don't need. I don't know. Like, it's yeah. not a race to wealth or something like that. No. It's a, you know, and I've never been happier in doing it, but it's just interesting a couple people that you, you tell and, and, and they want to and piss, some of on, things piss I tell, on your life a little bit. Yeah, and some people, because think of it, they're in that cubicle. They're in that corporate world, so they can't see past that. So when you deviate from yeah. that four corners, Sometimes. they're like, what? But, it, but it's I tell interesting because that's like, what you people define say. success. Like, define yeah, you. Yeah, that's the thing. And, and it's interesting because that's what people say, right? Like there's always haters in the beginning of a journey. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, that's how maybe, you know, you're doing something right, like stretching yourself out of your comfort zone and doing something a little bit different, but still enjoying the cigar. Has the cigar well, changed much for you? It's funny. I, I, I found it kind of peppery in those first three or four pulls and I'm not really getting the, the zing no, that I was expecting kind of from it. Like, but, um, no, I would say the same, same profile. Like I'm still getting that yeah. sweetness on the retro hail and the, um, I almost want to taste dried fruit, but I don't think I do. No, I don't either. It feels like it's sweetened up for me a little bit. Maybe I'm getting some of that sweetness and I'm trying to pinpoint where I was going to say that, that what was once that kind of dried powder cocoa, I think maybe now is a little bit, a little bit closer towards a milk chocolate perhaps. At the risk of sounding overly douchey. <laughs> Jesus but Christ. But dude, it's a beautiful, like from wrapper to color to, to cap to, you know, you just... If it wasn't, if it didn't have the, the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, you know, it still looks just like a, you know, it's coming from a great quality yeah, producer. For sure. And it's it's not what I would normally gravitate towards either. You know, I would normally gravitate towards some of that darker stuff. Right. Um, than this. But but this is this is still um, good for me. No, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Do, do you like it? <laughs> I do. I, I really like it. I, you know, like I said, it, it's obviously it's not sweetened cigar, but I'm getting some of that sweetie, sweet, sweetie chocolate. That, and it's, it's like that natural yeah. sweetness, which I think we both enjoy. It's, uh, it's tasty. It's, and, it's um, yeah, wouldn't be my go-to, but when I do want to change up, it, it could be a change up in, in my rotation. And I think it's interesting, too, that this is um, a Nicaraguan puro, meaning like everything yep. from binder to wrapper to filler is, is from Nicaragua. And he came um, from Drew Estate, which was Nicaragua. Right. But some of the sticks we've been smoking lately have had those like mixtures, so they really did kind of take you on that, that journey. This is a, you know, and I guess because a limited release, you want to keep everything consistent with it, uh, I would think. Mm -hmm. But um, for for you know for being only one one uh, country origin, I, I'm enjoying it. I like it. Color's beautiful, sun grown leaf wrapper. It's nice. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, I didn't. Did you happen to read, or did they disclose like kind of how long it was aged or anything like that? I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I read that you know it's naturally sun grown. I don't know how long it was actually aged um, thereafter, but really good, man. So Maybe how we can look long, that up and you know, uh, try to put. What it in I was the just thinking, uh, you know, sitting here and, and sort of like relishing the cigar and thinking now with being, you know, we're in the the dead of winter at this point. Um, we got not a ton of snow, but some snow and some ice yeah, yesterday, and and it's cold and it's going to stay cold for a few days, and and we were both saying that. We both have some heater setups in our garage, but it's still less than ideal. 
and we're just smoking a lot less. But we always say on how Thursday is one of our favorite days. We get together and we smoke, and mm -hmm. it's even more valuable now, I think, uh, this time of year, getting that one or two a week sometimes. I even remember more when you two, said but... that. You were like, dude, can you handle one? Like, I remember sitting by the fire at 30 degrees going, I got to figure out another plan. And you were like, yeah, dude, otherwise you're going to be down to one a week at my house. You yeah. know? And I was like, you know, we were at three a day in the summer, five a day. I know. But that's why I like that it'll we're making a count. We know it. Yeah, it'll be here before. It's almost. We know it. uh, I mean, geez, it's almost Christmas. This one will go live after Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, this will go live like in between Christmas and New Year's. So, yeah, this is the last episode of the year then. That's uh, you know from a release date standpoint. That's we still have a, another one or two to record, but that's crazy. A couple to record. Twenty twenty one. I think a lot of people are looking forward to the end of twenty twenty just because of everything that it's given. But you know, gosh. Who knows what the hell? Um, Who knows what's in store for us? Speaking of like Christmas and stuff, so I, I can't remember if you and I were talking and for somebody else or if we, you know, we're recording or not. But what um, we we talked about how it doesn't feel really like Christmas all yep. that much. Uh, what about for your kids? Like, are, are, is there any difference for them? I think there is. So um, my youngest just turned six yesterday. And when he found out we weren't having, like, cousins over, his grandparents over, all together at our house like we normally do, he literally was, like, tearing up. He's really? just, like, if he had the choice between a friend party and a family party, he would choose family party. He's, really? Yeah, he's, like, a, he's just a sweetheart of a kid. I mean, all, our, all my kids are great, but, yeah. like, to see a six-year-old boy be like, I'm not going to see my cousins or my grandparents, like, yeah. it, you know, and we're like, you know what, buddy, when this all calms down, like, we're going to celebrate and do it right. Um... But yeah, it was interesting. So I think they got a glimpse of it at Thanksgiving. Um, they kind of know that Christmas is going to be more like a drive through Christmas where the cousins will probably kind of come quick and do a drop off and mm -hmm. we'll do it in shifts. We'll see my parents and then my wife's parents will come later in the evening. Like, Let me ask you this. <clears throat> Are there, I don't know if you, you have, like sometimes you go to certain parties for Christmas mm -hmm. and maybe there's like a fringe relative that's there that you kind of, or, or like a fringe relative's young kid that maybe you get a gift for that maybe you wouldn't normally get a gift for, but because maybe they'd be the only kid you're not giving a gift to, right. so you get one for them. Are those kids being excluded this year? Oh, like without man. the family parties, I wonder. I don't know. I wonder like if there's just less gifts being given because out of sight, out of mind. That's for, a good for question. The fringe babies. That's a really good question. You know, uh, poor poor Timmy in the corner is gonna gonna have nothing. But um, I wonder how. Like I'm assuming online retail, like Black Friday, was different. The week Thanksgiving shopping was different. I mean, it's a bulk online. Dude, I have a very busy mall across the street from my neighborhood yeah. here, and. Um, every year around this time of year, it's just terrible. You can't, I mean, and uh, it's just not as bad this year. I mean, this year, it's, it's barely an uptick. You know, my wife's in, <clears throat> in purchasing and, and does stuff, and I know she's like, I mean, everything's online, you know? Like, obviously, yeah. for, for what she does is all online. But, um, you know, they're, they're busy. <laughs> so, you know, that I mean, it's good. But, you know, I feel bad for, like, the little mom-and-pop shops, the brick-and-mortar shops, which we try to uh, frequent more and more. But, but yeah. The thing is, we all say we want to and want to, but do we? Like, I know we try to a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's just a, it's just a sad reality of. And I think that's one of the things we talked about when you first said you were looking into opening a Primo's and how different it would be if you were like, I want to open up Eric's Sandwich Emporium. Mm -hmm. Like, what a what a monumental task that would be without having the recognition of of a Primo. Now, like, you know, now it would be around here, you, you know. I don't know that you it would could be do really it. difficult. I don't, know that you I, do it. I don't know that you could do it. I know, yeah, I don't, I don't know that you could, uh, honestly. I, but you could not that far from here. So even I was talking to a guy today, and he was saying, you know, in his town, he's about um, about forty five minutes west of Philly, uh, northwest or something like that. And th in his town, there's a private one and um, like a private label one and a Primos. And and he'll he said he'll try to go to the private label one because yeah. because it's like local, you know. So we, it still exists. People still try. We it's went back to that hard. small chocolate shop for Thanksgiving. Allie got a, a tray of pretzels and stuff, you know. And the one at Smithville? Or? No, the one in our town, like, just oh, to try oh, to support oh, it. Oh, that one, yeah. And, the, and she's, like, had sugar-free stuff set aside for me. I mean, just, you know, you don't, you don't get that kind of customer service, but it's not, you know, yeah. it's not keeping her, you know, that $40 yeah. tray is not keeping her afloat, you know. No, I mean, I went to this place. I was dating somebody, and she wanted soup, and I found a place that... It's called like just soup. Hmm. And like they got like eight different soups every day. 
Um, Oh, yeah, how's it's that? It's got to be a hard business. That person saying they don't take credit cards, cash only, which I didn't know until I got Most there. Most little places I had the are like that. Exact amount of dollars. Did they that. ironically have an ATM within most of those places? Will be oh, like, they normally do. Oh, conveniently, I don't think she did though. I think I got. And really they own them, and then they'll be like, "Oh, it's a six dollar <laughs> uh, charge." Which yeah, is coming right to me. I but, know. I don't like. But that hey, whole if it model. helps them stay afloat, I don't like that, that whole model of of them not. Accepting credit cards, I, I don't know. But makes me think of that pizza place on the shore that was like doing CD things, where you're like, "What's going uh, on?" All the cash places. Oh yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, just soup. But but anyway, back to the whole like staying afloat thing. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a niche because not a lot of people are making a whole meal out of soup. You got to be a big soup aficionado to really make a whole meal out of soup. And if you know to, to do that, then I don't know. Funny, we're talking about way for a side. Funny soup, there it is. Yeah, funny we're talking about soup. Um, a guy is I it funny? With, I don't know that it, that might <laughs> might not have been ironic that we're talking about soup, but because uh, one of my coworkers not our best material. this week was talking about how it's a good way to get kids to eat vegetables. He's like, just blend it up, and then it's just this homogeneous liquid. And I was like, that sounds like the least appetizing thing I've no, ever heard. When of. I was a kid, I wouldn't eat soup, and not my parents weren't trying to trick me with it or anything. I just thought it looked gross, the consistency or whatever. Yeah. Now here I am, all grown up. I bought I bought four cans of soup the other day. I haven't bought soup in forever from the grocery store, but I was like, man, it's just that chunky New England ham chowder. And then I saw like a nice chicken corn chowder. Then a, oh, another I thought one, you were building your apocalypse cabinet in case <laughs> My, like the world goes to shit. They, what do they call them? Soup. They, they uh, um, well, there's like the bug out bag. That's the bag you have in case you got a scoop. Bug out case, bag. Yeah, you never heard that. It's a phrase like you get your bug out bag in case you got a skedaddle because because <laughs> the zombies like they're impending. I don't, know. I don't know that I would leave my house. Like, but it's it's just if you gotta bug out. I, I don't know. For I don't know what qualifies as a bug out scenario to be honest. But um, you grab your bug out bag and you go. But what's the whole thing? Oh, the preppers, mm. the doomsday preppers. So they have the doomsday shelters. Do, do you ever um, watch that show? It's really really cool. Like I, maybe once or twice when it first came out. I think it starts to get like a lot of those shows where you start to wonder if it's overblown yeah. and not as real. No, it, it is because I remember the guy was training his kids and like, well, they have to go to school. He's like, no, we do eighteen hours a day, push ups, and they know to Dude, go in so the trees. Do you remember the show it. on Spike TV? Is that even still a channel? I don't even know. I don't think Spike so, TV is a so, thing. So, um, and it, it was called I forget what it was called, but they would take different warriors from history and pit them against each other. So there would be like. You know, Genghis Khan's warriors against pirates. Yes, I do and, remember and that. And they would show. take all these different they aspects. They gave the historical data, yeah, back it up. Yeah, they'd be like, all right, so their knife swing at this angle for this, the and they put speed and velocity. Yeah, speed and velocity and, and the percentage of kill rate, and they put it into a computer, and it says, well, in 100 battles, this one's likely to win this much. Whatever. <laughs> Dude, all right, so whatever. Throwaway show, but you, you watch it just like you watch all those shows with a little bit of conviction that like, I don't know, there's some truth to what's going on. Until I saw a guy I went to high school with as the mafia guy. Like, he's not, like, like mm. they actually had an episode where it was a, it was a mafia henchman versus uh-huh. something else. I think they were running out of like, Ideas. historical warriors. <laughs> the mafia but, boss but, but he's on historical. there as an actor, but he's pretending to be the mafia guy. I'm like, wait a second. Those weren't real pirates in the other episode. <laughs> that wasn't. You think they were filming? That the wasn't pirates? really Genghis Khan's Who warriors. From high um, would I have known him? Uh, he was actually. I don't think I went with him, and I don't think you would know him because you only came for senior year, right? Junior, junior, senior. and senior year. So he he would have been older. Uh, uh, gone. Uh, Joe Fronte mm. um, was his name. Um, but uh, yeah, I think he would have been a couple years older than you. I only knew him because of like he was uh, my good friend's older brother's friend. Gotcha. So but but anyway, circle. yeah, on the mafia expert, I'm like, he's not a mafia expert at all. Wow. Oh, so he wasn't portraying a mafia boss. He was on as the expert of what yeah. mafia people Yeah, I started mixing the story in there a little bit. But, but yeah, that, that's what kind of sucked. Um, it, those sh- it, it was just lame. Cause how, how do some of those shows get pitched? One of my favorite, like, kind of, I don't even know what you call it, trash can shows, or if, like, I just want to sit and not think I'll put on Drunk History because I like the idea of learning a little bit. Yeah. And I like the idea I of the, the funniness. I love the idea of Drunk History, but it never hooked me. I watched one trip. Right. I, I, I want to like it more, but it's a good, like we were wrapping gifts the other day. I had it on. It's a good background These are fake show. drunk and they're like a weird. I think so. And I, Ooh, I Speaking I, you of know, a whiskey. Let's get fake, let's get Eric fake drunk. But did you ever see, and I don't know what show, I don't know what channel it was on, but it was Man vs. Bear. <laughs> no, Dude. I saw Michael Phelps race a shark, but... Did the shark win, I hope? I believe it did. <laughs> then it ate him. Spoiler alert, it was a simulation. Aww. They put a hologram shark next to him. That's not fun at all. No. Because he'd have swum a little faster. If there was <laughs> That's a good point. That's an unfair advantage right? to the yeah. shark. 
Um, but Man vs. Bear had like three people from walks of life and literally you're playing tug of war with a bear and one like you're racing a bear but like it's separate. It's it, it's it's literally called man versus. Are you bear. really tug tug of war? Like, yeah. They tie a, a rope to the bear and just have it walk the other way. It's got like you got this heavy rope that's attached to like a tire, and it's like a trained bear, and he's like supposed to pull. But I, I would think a bear, I don't think a human's won. Like imagine winning tug of war against a bear. I mean, yeah, I won. Yeah. Bear. <laughs> Suck bear. Dude, all those shows, they never did it for me. Um, the Ninja Warrior one was cool for a second, but um, then they had all the offshoots. The Broken like... Ranch thing, and then the there's the the like that was a Steve Austin one, you know. Hmm. Not Ninja Warrior e, but it was like outdoor obstacle course e. Then you have, now they have the, the Titan rock, Games the, doing the, the rock, rock right? the Titan Games thing, which is it connected um, to Titan Fitness? No, nah, I don't. I I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, could be, but I don't. I don't. I've never watched it. But a lot of people I follow on Instagram, a lot of CrossFitters do it and do well in it. So f in my former life, I worked with a lot of CrossFitters, and right. so a lot of people that I like, follow on Instagram and stuff um, are doing well. On I just the, wonder, on that show. like, how, like how did the, how does the pitch idea, like, hey, we're gonna do man versus bear? So I, I don't know about man versus bear necessarily, <laughs> but I was gonna say, like, you know, for the Titan Games, I think the pitch is. Let's find a turd and then let's just hook the rock's name to it, and then it's going to do well no matter what, you know. Um, I don't know. That's what I, I don't know. I don't, I don't watch a lot of those shows. Dude, they, like they they actually say that the highest rated shows are shows that you and I have no clue about because it, it's things like Young Sheldon and Big Bang Theory, and yeah, that kind of stuff. It's 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 sort of middle America prime time TV still crushes it compared to everything else, despite the fact that. It's completely off our radar. Yeah. The only thing I know about the, the Big Bang Theory is that... I don't, even, Coco? I don't know how to say her name. Fox. Mayim Bialki. Uh, Mayim Bialik? You there mean Blossom? You Blossom. Yeah. I, I always know her as Blossom. They referenced her in the first season as the actress because she's also, I think, a physicist in real life. She's a doctor she did, of like, right? phys physics or So something. they referenced her. And um, now they have her like in the show as a different character. I just think that's ironic. What else? There. Oh, there's a few things that are like that where they... like. Well, not exactly like that, but like things like Law and Order, where like the same B actor has been in forty different episodes over the years as like different victims or like whatever. We even yeah, we were talking about like in the office before. We're uh, you know we're we're simple minded men. I, I would say community, like, dude. Community, I know I watched that. I promise, and I, I've seen cook, cook a little bit of it, dude. I'm telling you, if you watch like the first couple episodes, I like it. And here's the thing: if, you, if anybody watches Community. You have to watch it through those end credits. You know, like after after the last commercial break, there's always like a 20 second clip yep. or show, and it's usually throwaway stuff, or um, like on Two and a Half Men and stuff, it would be like a title slide or something like that mm -hmm. at the end. This they always do a little like 20 second skit, and sometimes it's like the funniest part of the show. And uh, there's these two people. I mean, Donald Glover is one of them. You know, who yeah. I've always kind of liked, but I didn't know why. He just seemed. And then when you watch this, because he also is. Um, What's what? his alter ego? His alter music. ego. He just wanted, like, he won a grab, Yeah, so he? he's super talented. Young somebody. Yeah, it's, it's totally eluding me right now for some, some reason, but... We look like two old white guys. That don't know they're <laughs> I know. They're pop artists. No, but, but I mean, he, he, I've always liked his character, but he, he, played, he played, like, a quirky young guy. Young Gambino. Childish, Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew young something. Young. He's not young. He just acts a little young. He's childish. <laughs> but, but no. He's not true. But then when you go, Gambino. he was actually, like, a... How He's did a comedian. It, he was he was had a YouTube series in college with a couple of people. Mm -hmm. Tina Fey saw it, plucked him right out of college to be a writer, I think, on Thirty Rock, mm. and then he went over to Community, and you know started blowing up his personal brand while he's on awesome. Community. But that character he plays is like not a slick, sexy rapper. Like he plays. Like a goof, a like, total like awkward, well, awkward, he's, awkward. He's a stand up. He was like a stand up guy. He was like a stand up comedian. I think he he has that too. But then he was also raised like a Jehovah's Witness, so he didn't know. So didn't so know his whole life, he said, is like abnormal to like his parents. So he kind of plays that character. I think that he was as a kid hmm. on the show to an extent. Like I think he draws from that. So he does play a very pure kind of naive guy. I almost want to watch just for that like Dude, I'm telling aspect you, of it. Of the there's like seven main characters. Joel McHale is like the leading man. He doesn't it's do about anything community funny. College. Yeah, and, and he doesn't do anything funny in the show. The 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 people that really make you laugh are Donald Glover. Um uh Chevy Chase has like some really small zingers that do, like or just set up perfectly or he sets other people up. And then the other character plays the opposite Donald Glover a lot. They had like a ton of chemistry. They do like 
they like freestyle rap and stuff in the closing credits. Like that's cool. So talented. Um, those three really have all the jokes. Everybody else just sets them up pretty much. Um, but they are able to carry it, dude. It's just I am going too to good. make a I don't promise. Know if I missed it. On on winter break, which is coming up in a couple of days, I will I will binge some of that and and, and Gosh, tell you tell out. you what I like. Um, going totally back different. to the stick, real quick. We're, we're kind oh, we of, should we should talk about this. Well, we're finishing up we're the first. Halfway, getting I was going to say getting to, um, getting to the second, third. Are you getting any remnants of like I, I get a Mikierda kind of vibe from it Dude, right about now? Man, you know what? I just had one of those the other day too. The blue label one, right? Mm-hmm. Not the red. What's um, the difference between the red and the blue besides the color? I know I have more blues. I only have the one red, so I'm reluctant to smoke it. You know, I, I'd be talking about my ass off the top of my head. But I want to say the red is a sun-grown version, mm. um, and the blue might be like t- more towards the Maduro. I'm completely talking out of my butt. No, I, that um, sounds good, though. But I you've had more blues than... Have you had the red? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have. I've had But both, I'm getting blue Mikierda. I like the blue one Profile pattern. right now. That's what I'm okay. like. If I had anything to compare it to. If someone was like, what would you I'm compare not, it to? I'm not, you know, I believe, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, it's not hearkening back to that for me, but at the same time, I don't, um, I don't uh, have a great memory for sticks a lot of times, you know, I, I think I've talked about that a lot. Um, to me, the cigar, as much as I love it, is always like complimentary to my moment, yep. whether it's what's in the sports radio, watching the Eagles, watching the Eagles bring a quarter, a backup quarterback <sighs> in who looks like a stud, you know, Amazing. those moments, I remember a lot more about the game than I do the sticks I was smoking. Mm-hmm. I just know that I had about four sticks during that game because I was hype. Yeah, that was I, I couldn't believe it. I remember texting you because the Giants. Uh, I was in the zone. I don't think you wound up texting me like. Oh yeah. During were, the game at like yeah. five thirty, I didn't text you back till the next day because yeah. I was. Dude, I had a friend over. We were we had like I have that this TV in the garage, and then we were we had a fire pit right outside the mm-hmm. garage door, and we were just like, you know, drinking some beers and just chain smoking sticks and watching the game. Like there hasn't been an Eagles game. Where so is that enjoyable to I've, watch? <laughs> I've, enjoyable, yeah. but but yeah, I guess enjoyable and but just exciting to where I, I forgot honestly, dude. I forgot what it was like to watch that kind of football. There was moments where you know, you, like they're running a play and, and there's a lot on the line and you want them to win and you're actually you just start like screaming out loud. Yep. You know, like oh oh, like go go go. You know, like like I haven't done that for a game in so long. I was um, more animated for for the the Giants game. I that think crapped so. the bed, but. So what's their deal now? So it is what it is, man. Is Daniel Jones out? Is he hurt? Is he their franchise quarterback? What's you know? What's funny? Someone is he asked hurt me. right now? Is he out? I don't think he's one hundred percent. He's not. He's not out. I don't oh, see him on the Oh, he got benched for like the fourth quarter. Or yeah, something, they right? they put they put big Colt McCoy Colt back McCoy. in. But someone Great asked name. me. It is a good name. It's a good porn star name. It's a good. I mean, it's a good. It's a sports good, name. It's, it's a good uh, quarterback name too. From like if for like if you're high in high school football. in Oklahoma. Yeah. Like if you're at a high school in Texas or Oklahoma and your name's Colt McCoy, you're, like you're pulling tail. Yeah. <laughs> like, Even if it's yeah, that's very. That was a good. That was a good description of what that name would do in a, in a, in a football town. I don't know what um, it would do with the tail, but it would pull it a lot pull of it. it. Um, but, you know, someone asked me a couple weeks ago, and I was like, you know what, we got to give the kid time. we got to give the kid time. And I, unfortunately, I think he played not at 100%. He's still that young quarterback. But I'm concerned that maybe he's not the, the franchise. I don't know if he's the face. I saw someone post, too, that as much as Eli Manning wasn't loved and revered, at least he was consistent. Like, you know, he yeah. started for years. I don't know if the Giants will see that again. The city embraced him. Like, your team, yeah. fan base embraced Eli, despite his face. <laughs> he was a... He was a but, um... He Do you think Eli's a Hall of Famer as a, as a I, Giants fan? I think he – I always describe him this way. I think he was an above-average quarterback that had two stellar runs. Mm-hmm. And the stellar runs happened to be against some really solid, you know, the New England teams. And um, it's the funny thing. When the Giants had Eli, you know, in their good years, like when they, when they you know, I would fear – as an Eagles fan, I would fear the Giants. I never felt like I feared Eli a ton. Mm-hmm. Same with Romo, like down in Dallas, never I, – I totally understand what you're saying. But then when he was on, he did stuff where you were like, why can't you do that? Like, right. he would do stuff that I was like, if you did that, more? Unbelievable. Like, then he got older and less comfortable. Like, you know, he started his career uncomfortable, you know, out of the pocket, and he kind of ended his career the same way. Yeah, um, just I think age happens. caught up with him. Uh, he wasn't able to move. Of course, Wentz's excuse. He's, uh, he's not comfortable doing anything. It's but, funny. Um, you said, like, remember we talked about him having a family last week, and you're like, yeah, but... All like most quarterback, like most football. I mean, players. they it's all want to have a family. Go do, you yeah, gotta you gotta go to work. I, I don't but think it it's a family. I, I don't. Him. I don't agree with that. I, I don't think it was a family. A lot of people think you know that played in. I think if if family played in, I don't think it was from a standpoint of well, they're a distraction that consumed his time. I do think family played in uh, with his injury history, 
And I think oh, that's some, a, like, sometime, to be safe around you wanna... he, sometime when, around when he had his daughter is when he also had that concussion in the playoff game last year. And I think that might have set something off, honestly. Like, that, that's, that's just what, where my head goes with him. Um, in, in, in a way, not... not I'm not no, saying he's I, a lot. He's I a hard worker. A good... that's, that's the one thing I will say. As much as us Philly fans, like, we can go hot and cold on, on players, like, really quickly, mm-hmm. um, a lot of people will still say, even if they don't love Wentz and the way he's playing, they'll still say he's played his heart out. Like, he's gone out there. He's been sacked, like, 50 times. Yeah. 5-0. Like, and and he, he plays hard. He's just not up to par. Yeah. But, but people, are, people are still kind of respect him. They just want him out of the way. Mm-hmm. Well, he's he's got a lot of money. Feel? He's got a lot of money tied up into him doesn't he contract wise yeah yeah it's a huge thing and i don't know exactly how those contracts are so like they talk about the dead cap space and this yeah, and that but yeah. but um i'm curious for you now did you you watch that eagles game right yes now we already played you guys twice now that we have hurts in there are you glad we already played twice mm-hmm. like like you see hurts and you're like oh we might might have something as as you know a fan of the rival team yeah i think it could have um i think those games could have had a dramatic turn differences, you know, especially the second game. Obviously, you guys won the first first go through. Um, Barely, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if, you know, but I think maybe it we win that one more definitively. Exactly, and, I think it could have been maybe a, even uh, pull out the second one. You exactly, it's not like blowouts. It's really interesting. And we don't have, you know, we don't have Saquon Barkley, and yeah, there were these weird things coming back about like does Odell Beckham Jr. come back into the play? Because did you see all his news reports? He was like, I always wanted to remain a giant. I wanted to be a giant. Like he's kind of putting his. Don't go there. That's what we did with Deshaun Jackson. No, no, and I don't think to be honest, I think they, they did a report. We're trying to relive glory days with Deshaun Jackson. Exactly. We brought him in for two years, like twenty million or whatever it is for two years, and he's played like three and a half games or something. No, and I think it would be the same. I think it would be the same. He would tie up a lot of money. I would rather a non-selfish player like Barkley over 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 the the dramatic and the... Saquon, what happened? He was an Achilles? Was it Achilles or an ACL? I think it was the ACL. I'm not 100% though. It's getting people this year. I feel like there's just been a lot of devastating injuries. And I've said it before. He reminds me like he's got like a Bo Jackson quality to those legs where he's like almost too muscular for his build. He's, he's not a small guy. And, and so like, like, you're an Achilles, he does, like, like he's amazing you, uh, blow out, like an ACL or Achilles yeah. or something like that as a running back and his style of running back like I, you know who knows what he what he is when he comes back. Let's hope it's you know something close to what he was even if you know I'll, I'll take him at 80 percent you mm-hmm. know he's still got a lot of skill there but no it, it, it's interesting i'm hoping that i like judge i like um joe judge's coaching style so i don't want this season as bad as it is to be a reflection of this young coach i want him to develop and see what he does with recruiting and 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 you know trading and that is the style. one thing that even on philly sports radio it's not talked about a lot but it's come up in passing is um um, you know, Dallas is just dysfunctional, mm-hmm. but um, you guys and Washington um, with Juan Rivera, I think it is, um, have brought in coaches that seem to be that next coach that's actually yeah. going to be your coach for a while. Seems Which is like funny because we've, we, we've gone like, we've had like three interim coaches since Coughlin. Exactly. Like, it's kind of weird. And, and we were never that team. And, and even just hearing you and Brian talk about it, it sounds like you guys are, are in on them. I like, I like, you know, Our town was really in on Doug not that long ago too, but and that's the thing. We're all at the end of the day. Yes, I think we're does. all fair. I think we're all fair weather fans. Like if in three seasons you know we're still is? going, we're rebuilding. I we got to give being them... a kid, man, and and that whole thing of being like a poser or a front runner. Like that was a big insult. Do you remember where you lived? Was that? Oh yeah. Was it like you're a front runner, and and the thing bandwagon is bandwagon jumper. Now as an adult, and I hear a lot of people agree with this. It's like. Yes. Yep. My time is valuable. My t- my time is precious, and so um, uh, sports is nothing more than entertainment. And when my team sucks, it's not entertaining. So I'm going to spend my time and money on Elsewhere. something that's more entertaining. I don't think there's no shame in that. And and um, you know, I think adults tend to realize that now. But I'm mean, still always an Eagles fan. Don't get me wrong. But I, I I'm agree. Not, uh, Sundays aren't appointment viewing. Now they are. I agree, hundred percent. That last game, I felt like I wasted a few hours that I could have been doing something with my kids. Where, where when we were winning, I'm like, well, I was invested and I was a part right. of this win. You know, like, have, have, do your kids check out when the Giants aren't doing well? Like, I know, you, you know, your kids, you watch the games with them a lot. They tend to, when I get animated, positive or negative, they'll kind of come back. They're on their devices or have their headphones on. But I'm holding my oldest nine-year-old. He's getting into like watching. Does he want to play football at all? Or? 
He does. They have. They they actually have some touch football stuff to, to where where we live for for his age. Um, I'm just do they have afraid. tackle also? Or? They do have tackle. It's just a huge. It's like literally five nights a week. Like it's something that. What about from the safety standpoint, though? Like, is that a thing? Do you guys? Oh, care? it's definitely. It definitely is. Just because he's like me. He's he's a baby gorilla. He's a big kid at nine. He's almost five to 130 plus pounds. So oh, I think so wholly co- playing with. I think right. So kids that are older than him. Yeah. And they'll just they'll be able to out mental tough mental toughness and he he doesn't have that yet he doesn't have that killer's edge like he's he's just a kid he's a a baby you know he he feels bad when he makes you feel bad so like (laughs) i can't see him hitting someone and being like i wanted you to like you know that's yeah let's get to high school before we want to break someone's leg you know that kind of thing oh wait make him an offensive lineman then and the whole the whole spin is you're protecting the guy behind you that's a good point he's a protector center or something you know don't let anyone get your guy no that's a really good that's a good uh Outlook, Ali's like you know we always joke like you know he's a good he's got a great soccer kick like mm-hmm. he when he would play goalie which he hated but he's actually pretty good at because he's so big, um, <laughs> you know when they do those corner kicks and he gets the ball out of there I mean he'll send it all the way down I'm like hey man you could be a six six three hundred and twenty five <laughs> pound <laughs> kicker like, you know yeah who knows but that, I want him to just enjoy like I don't ever want to push no. You I want to expose him to things, though. I waited him to, for, for him to, be, you know, be like, I want to go throw or I want to go do this. Because if you make it a chore at nine, he, what's, he's never going to want to go in the gym right. and lift with me, you know. Yeah. And I want him to want that, you know. So, and and, and they and they all are. All the, all three of the kids are gravitating towards seeing the gym in the garage and wanting to know when they can do this. And it's it's exciting to yeah. watch what you love doing. I would love watching my kids play football. What, Imagine if, what if Holden was just like? Hey, Dad, you've been doing keto. I want to do keto. Ali and I can, talked about can that. Can kids do keto? They like, can. Is it safe like, there's, a, there's a guy, the keto dad. Or... Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that's what we were eating before we were refined sugars and all right. that kind of stuff. You know, we were yeah. raised on animal fat and vegetables. And, yeah. You know, that's what, that was yeah, our fuel source. That's true. Yeah. We, only in the last, what, half century? Century yeah. that, that the breads and carbs became our fuel. Mm-hmm. Which I think has led to a lot of sickness. No, that's I, a good I, point. I see it in myself. Like that, infl- a lot of the inflammation's gone. A lot of weird skin issues, like dry patches, gone. Yeah. Heartburn gone. Like it's crazy. Yeah. So it's 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 interesting. You know what's cool now? With Not the, that we're health professionals and we would no. recommend anything. No. But. You know what's cool? I just noticed with the new audio setup is that like. Like, you can hear this, but, not but as, it's not right oh, in front that's of good. my friend. That's nice. You can hear DJ Easy E scratching yeah, his scratching records? Yeah, scratching on the, the papers on the, on the desk. It's nice having a little bit more focused microphone so we can kind of move around a little bit more freely and not be as worried. So our, so we had, this was the first time I had a snow day where I had to work. And the kids mm. had a snow day and they were at school. Like, you know, like even my uncle was like, oh, it's a snow day. You know, I'm like, yeah, but we're, we're. he's like, that's ah, fucking ridiculous. Like, you know, yeah. don't wait, like, go play in the snow. Like, that's what you should be doing. You know, I always wrestle with that as a non-parent. Um, I just wrestle with that idea of, like, quote, giving a kid a childhood versus, like, why? Like, why, why, like, why not just start training them for life and the way life is? Because you know, you're only not, like, you, you know, you What the cosmic rest of your life. force is there, though, that says, yeah. like, kids need to be children? Like, no, what is true. that and why? Even in, like, Scientology, kids are just little people. Like, they oh, work, really? they do, yeah. And back again, kids were working. Like I mean, I don't know anything about Scientology other than the the photon things and some sperm thing and the volcano. And then wasn't that thing? That's like, another show. Did somebody love, come like in the volcano and then the volcano exploded? I don't know and if then, they like, came photon in the volcano, babies were everywhere. And but then, we came from some other planet, yeah. and they put us like those bodies. The thetans ended up in the volcano, and when the volcano pro- exploded, pro- pro- proton, yeah, thet- thetans. That's right. And they make thetan meters and all kinds of yeah, stuff. That's insane. All right, Gary, we um, went off a little bit there. Um, got to go get sit right in front of the heater a little bit, get warmed up a little bit more. And um, we're coming back. We're about to take the bands off here, or at least I am. Yep, and uh, so we figured we'll come back, wrap this stick up. Um, been another fun episode here. Um, Always. Great seeing you. So you had um, a snow day today. I was worried you wouldn't even be able to come over. Are you guys off again tomorrow with the kids and stuff? 
No, so uh, with the roads being what they are, I think I'll I'll be physically physically in the building. But this was the first time you that will. I, okay, you will. So wait, did you have, did you have? To, oh, so the kids, there's no snow days anymore. Well, that's that's kind of that's kind of the, the the sticking point. Like with virtual learning as an option, will there ever be a snow day? Like, so we got a text at almost five o'clock in the morning that don't report in, but you're expected to sign in and, and be accessible and work. Like I called parents. I caught up on paperwork. Like I, yeah, I, I actually wonder, had a pretty that, busy that's an entitlement off day. thing, right? Because the first thought, the first thought is like, oh, snow like day. this sucks, no snow day. Like, oh, but it sucks. I'm not getting a snow day. But like, oh, when when are we ever guaranteeing snow days or whatever? You know what I mean? I guess. No, yeah, that's the big debate. Like, what? Well, what I mean, you guys will just get out earlier. You know, we done school sooner because you right. want all those days, it, it, extra days off. But there is something about like the dead of winter. When you're like you're cold and inside, and then like, hey, I don't, I don't have that responsibility today. Oh, it's and like everyone feels like a kid, like even the staff. Like, dude, you know. for me, even right now, I'm signing this contract tomorrow. I haven't really had much to do this week. It's perfect time for a snow day, and like, I, I took a quote snow day today, just from you know side ventures. Even adults just, need it too. We all need we mental do. health days. We do need, but but I guess you just take a vacation day. Like you, yeah. you're just not going to get those unplanned weather kind of final days. I heard some parents say like, oh, well, if we don't have a snow day tomorrow, my child will have a sick day and make snow angels, you know? Like, so, you know, you'll, you'll have yeah. those days too. But. That's tough. I, I, I totally get that too, but that's a weird thing. Like, I It is. Know. It's a weird world. Like, the world doesn't like, have what, snow days. Yeah, what do you do? do you, I, I totally get the con- I don't have kids, right? So, I told, but I totally get the concept of being like, well, I want my kid to be a kid and go play in the snow and not really do schoolwork. But at the same time, I don't know why. Like that's not real life, and right. so that's what are we. What are we setting them up? Not for? to mention, they get the whole summer off anyway, and school's done at like two thirty. Like, <laughs> you've got like six hours to go out and play after that's that true. until dinner or whatever. Well, like so, so our kids are on the computer until three thirty, and then like it gets dark at like four thirty now. You know, yeah. so it is. No, I, know, I there, totally get just it. That difference of did, did you do? The did, did you let the kids play hooky a little bit today, or? Um, we did yesterday, like kind of when it was snowing and they were done, oh, yeah. and it was Marshall's birthday. Today you can't so even play this. It's just ice. Right, it's it was crunchy, like ice. gross. Like I said, I came out this morning and I was going to go buy rock salt for the first time in years because it was a sheet of ice our, our whole yeah. driveway and street. But uh, luckily, did the stores have any? Um, Home Depot had some because I went for other reasons. But oh. um, by the time I went, I was like, yeah, it's going to melt. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, I just didn't. That's kind of what I always do. I shoveled it and then. Even though it didn't get above freezing, it still yeah. kind of melted off the sun and everything. But all right, man, let's uh, let's wrap this bad boy up. What? Um, any final thoughts? I, for me, it didn't change. It, it didn't. It, it is what it is. It was steady. It was good. Consistent I, I'm, all the way through. I, I hate to say it. I'm not paying fifteen dollars a stick for it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Personally. We we were kind of joking off camera. It's just not camera. my flavor. It's just not. My, but for the right person, for their, I could oh, see. Like for me, what I would cons- I would still prefer like a like an undercrown Maduro over this. Hmm. And that's you know, half price. Yeah, like thirty <laughs> percent less or whatever. Um, I'm glad we got to experience them because they they are that rare the rare rarer stick, and it comes from a, a producer that we we have been enjoying. Um, but for sure. I, I don't want to say I set my my you self did. up for failure, but I, th- I think we Dude, did. we got these sticks, I want to say like two and a half, three weeks ago. And we were like, and we're we want to save, save it to do in an episode. So we overhyped them a little bit. For me, it's like super troopers for me. It was just so hyped by the time I watched it. It was just okay. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm glad we have more. I'm, yeah. I'm going to smoke them. I'm oh, going to yeah, enjoy yeah. them. I just think that... Um, I don't know. We'll, see. Was, we'll it, let him age a little bit, and, and we'll see when we come back point. to it. It might be a pleasant surprise. Next time, I'm going to have lower expectations, and I'm, I'm, I can see myself Enjoying loving it. More. I can definitely see you, because you like Sungrowns, I think, a little bit more than I do. Yeah. I can see you especially coming back next time you have it and texting me and saying, hey, but you know what? I came around on this stick. And, and I don't want to say I didn't like it. Like, I really, really I liked it, but I don't know that I liked where I thought I was going to like it. But... It has all the flavors that I enjoy. It's got the natural sweetness. It's got the leather notes. I had a little bit of pepper mixed in there. I think for me, it didn't take me on that. Like, whoa, did you feel that change? You appreciate you the that? journey through the thirds. You really do. I do. And I, do. Um, and, and, I totally get why. I like the now leave me the hell alone. Like had had a journey. Like there was a little journey into that for one. For sure. You know? So now I was that, expecting yeah. a little more of that, but consistent flavors, consistent like no burn issues. Great, great, you know, enjoyable stick. Um, but just not, almost not what I was expecting in a, in a weird way, but I don't, not in a bad way. 
All right, so people have, should, they, they should still try it. They should see it for themselves. If you see it, not if you can find it. away from it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I would also say, see where you can find one. Maybe don't spend 15 or, or even more, potentially, mm. on the secondary market for it. Other than that, man, been another fun time chatting with Always you. Our weekly stick in the Thursday, winter. Bud. If nothing else, we get this one stick a week in together. And uh, to all of you, as always, long ashes. Stay smoky, friends. Thanks for checking out the Cedar Culture Podcast. If you'd like that episode, go ahead, tap, like, follow, subscribe, whatever it is on your platform of choice. And if you are on YouTube, hit that bell as well to be notified of new episodes. It really helps us out. We appreciate it. And then don't forget to head over to Instagram and Facebook and follow us as well. Do it. Do it.